Welcome to the Lockdown Lectures, where we are learning about the lives of some of Manchester's amazing researchers. Today we're joined by Nikki Cullen, Professor of Nursing at the University of Manchester. Nikki began her career as a nurse in the 1980s. She has described herself as an accidental academic who stumbled into nursing after dreaming about a career as a vet. What has followed is a stellar career, with Nikki being made dame for her services to nursing, research and wound care in the Queen's Birthday Honours in 2013. Welcome, Nikki. Thanks, Megan. Great to meet you. So firstly, how are you coping with the lockdown and what is the one thing that has got you through? Has there been any time for any compulsive reading or viewing? Well, I share a flat in Ancoats with a friend who also works at the university. And what has been getting me through is planning every day's evening meal, shopping for the meals, there's a bit of exercise and then cooking. And I made actual mayonnaise for the first time ever from scratch yesterday. And I can't believe how easy it was. And actually it's easier than walking to the shop to buy mayonnaise and far more delicious. So cooking has been what's getting me through. Plus a bit of compulsive Netflix and Schitt's Creek particularly, which I absolutely love. It's hilarious and life affirming. So I thoroughly recommend that. Yeah, I might have to give that a go. Um, and as, as mentioned earlier, Nikki, you've had an amazing career. What, it, what was the spark that inspired you to pursue your area of research? And did you face any challenges along the way? So I think everyone faces challenges. So my broad area of research is health and social care. And as, as you said before, I started out wanting to be a vet. And then, then I, went, I didn't get into veterinary school. So I went into lab sciences and pharmacology, specifically, and nursing. And I finished my PhD about 30 years ago, but when I finished it, I realised actually lab sciences weren't really for me and that I wanted to do research that was much more people orientated and much more about humans. And so it's quite a good job. I didn't get to be a vet, actually. My um, science degree and my nurse training, I think, enabled me to bring sort of scientific thinking and critical thinking to nursing. And I saw that that was kind of a valuable thing to bring to nursing. I think nursing needs research evidence in order to constantly learn about and improve on what nursing does, improve the quality and the safety of care. And when I trained in the 1980s, there was very little good quality research evidence for nursing in those days. Nursing was a very new academic discipline then. And that to me was really the spark, knowing that actually I could bring the science to bear on an area that I was passionate about, in other words, nursing and um, really make a difference. That was the exciting uh, challenge and the spark really. Thanks Nikki. And this next question was submitted by Anne Arnold. And Anne would like to know what characteristics make a really great nurse? That is a really good question. I think you need to be a people person, obviously, who can empathize and communicate with all kinds of people but you also need to be able to integrate complex information of lots of different kinds into decisions that make a difference to people's lives. So it's compassion, it's empathy, but it's also the ability to integrate all kinds of information and make complex decisions. And Joanna Nesbitt has asked, do you think the pandemic will change the public perception about the importance of nursing and how we care for older people? And if so, why? Thanks, that is a great question as well. So I think until very recently, and possibly even still, there's been debate about whether nurses even need degrees. And I hope uh, the visibility of nursing during the COVID pandemic and the realization that much of what nursing involves now is, as I said before, complex decision making that requires us to be adept to integrating scientific information, uh, an understanding of psychology, an understanding of socioeconomic issues and how they influence people's lives, integrating all that information into how we care for people. Um, hopefully that sort of visibility of nursing in the pandemic will put that debate to rest finally, I hope. I mean, suffice to say that nobody questions the compatibility of education and empathy for any other group of people, I don't think. So infant school teachers, nobody, you know, we want infant school teachers to be lovely with small children, but we don't say that 
you shouldn't really give them a degree because they don't really need a degree. Nobody questions that. I don't know why they question it for nursing. And, I, and we don't worry about any other professional group being over-educated. Education is always a good thing. And so, yeah, so I hope if one positive thing has come out of this pandemic, which is awful, it's the visibility of nursing, the importance of nursing, and also the importance of social care staff, the importance of staff in care homes, who often aren't nurses, but they're delivering a lot of personal care and, put, and have put, put themselves on the front line for very low pay. So, so hopefully this has, has changed the, the way that society views a lot of workers, actually, including nurses. That's a really interesting point. Um, and obviously we're all the way from campus at the moment. What do you miss the most about the University of Manchester? Well, without doubt, um, my friends and colleagues. So nurse, uh, nursing and uh, research, particularly health research, is very much a team sport. You know, we work in teams. We're not the kinds of people who work um, in isolation at all for our research. So I really miss human relationships, contact human contact of a real sort, not just, not just via, via Zoom. So some of my work colleagues are also really good friends and I miss them. I also miss the campus. I went, walked onto campus um, last weekend for the first time since lockdown and it is looking really beautiful. There's been some really beautiful landscaping and the planting is looking lovely and nobody's there hardly to see it, which is a, which is a real shame. And Nikki, looking back, what advice would you have given to yourself at the start of your career? Well, that's a really good question as well. So I think um, you can't plan a career too tightly. And, you know, we all have lots of disappointments in our, in our work lives and our personal lives, our careers. And I think uh, what I've learned and what I would say to me, at, at, you know, at much younger age is crushing disappointments often lead to the best unanticipated new opportunity. So don't be too crushed by things that don't go your way because actually what then happens is often much better than what you, you'd hoped for before. And finally, what advice would you have given to yourself at the start of the lockdown? It would have been <laughs> to get a comfortable office chair straight away. So I was I got this really snazzy designer looking chair from uh, uh, an online retail company uh, that uh, was cripplingly uncomfortable. I realised for sitting at a computer all day, every day, every time I got up, I could hardly walk. So I've only just got a comfortable chair and it's made a massive difference. <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. Uh, thank you, Nikki, for taking the time to answer those questions. Thank you very much. Thanks, Megan.